What's up, everybody? I want to welcome you all to the Michael Rose experience. I think that I need to start paying for some goddamn promotional posts or some shit because I am yes, just shocked yes. and appalled at the amount of motherfuckers that done been on this show that have not seen this motherfucker. <laughs> it's crazy to me. Anyway, um, even though we only a few episodes in, I am just elated to have my sister yes. here. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Miss Tasha, Tasha, Tasha Mac Management Mac, yes. is in the building with me today. I'm so glad I've been waiting for you to come. So glad you're here. I'm glad that I'm glad to we be can here. have this time together. Of course. Yeah, I know it's about to be late, right? <clears throat> right? I'm trying to keep it together. Just Yeah, we went to happy hour before we came here. So and we are happy. <laughs> <Quit playing>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, I will let you start off um by telling the people how we met and what we be having going on, girl. Okay, first of all, y'all, I met Michael. Well, like, introduce yourself and tell the people about mismanagement and okay, all let that. Me, let me get y'all all that. Uh, my little yeah, all of that. All that. I'm gonna give y'all all of that, okay? First of all, some of you may know me, some of you may not, but I am Tasha Mac Management. The management stands for more than just hair because I'm more than just hair. Um, if you need a makeup artist, you need a inspirational coach, uh, you need a shoulder to cry on, or you just need me to pray for you, or scream, kick, holler, and cry with you, I'm that person. Or a fight in the cut. Because uh, I do it all. All. All I'm of that. Saying. That's the all of that part. All of that. So we have jacked up a few. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> um, so we met how, you know, because I'll be forgetting. I let everybody else tell the stories. Yeah, he's a little forgetful. But I'm going to run it all the way back like oh, it was that shit. day. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, let me start off by saying I have been in this hair game licensed going on my 17th year. So let's give a look. Hands up for that. Yes, I, I keep am forgetting proud. to request a round of applause sound bite, but you know, yeah, we'll have but that. I just made my own. Okay, like. that's fine. <sighs> so, <laughs> is that the crowd going well? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I met Michael, y'all. Oh, how many years have it been? It's been a long Bitch, we ain't that old. It ain't been that long. He not that old. <laughs> I did not know he was this young, but okay. So we met at church. Can y'all believe that? Praise him. I met Michael. I do church. know the Lord. <laughs> Quit playing. <laughs> <laughs> I know him. <laughs> a little bit. So we met at church, <laughs> and Michael, y'all know he's a big personality, mm-hmm. and it was very clear that we did not care for each other. He really didn't like me. I, I didn't. I don't even know I didn't why. Know who I didn't she thought she was coming up in there, all cute and stuff. First of all, that's just Tasha <laughs> Mag. Every time I walk into a building, I command the presence. You used to just be prancing outfit. around in your little heels and stuff. Just yeah, until one day he finally said to me, "I like your shoes." That's how we started <laughs> talking. That's how we got this close mm-hmm. and been inseparable ever since. It was the shoes, and then that was when your hair was long. I did have and long so you hair. You would just be. Swinging my hair, yeah. My hair was her. anointed. Stop playing. Whatever. You know, it used to just be moving and stuff. Yeah. And you just real be, hair moves. You used to just be prancing, like I said, with your little heels on. Real healthy hair and stuff. moves. I knew you was over there smoking weed, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I knew what the deal was. No, I'm playing. Uh, but anyway, we eventually ended up working in... Uh, ridiculous chain of salons <laughs> <laughs> we was shop hopping we have been shop hopping like we say you chair hop your hair pop well you shop hop what and where are we at now at the house yes anyway um <laughs> i'm doing other things okay i'm here obviously so listen i anyway, mean we're uh, at home but we still work. oh <clears throat> listen okay. we're not here to discuss that we're here to talk about why you should go to the doctor and check your hormones and stay up on that kind of stuff because it's very important that you know what's going on inside of your body so that you can know how to treat what's going on outside of your body. Exactly. Your skin, your nails, your hair. Right. The title of this episode, what did we say was go to check your hormones and stuff. That's because you really should just go check. I done sent like three or four different clients to the dermatologist within the past month or so. And each one of them have come back with some sort of hormone that was out of whack. Hmm. which was the reason why 
they started we losing having, hair. No, not losing hair, but, well, I mean, some of them, yes. But um, not the ones I sent you to dermatology recently. Those people have a scalp, really bad dry scalp and, and, and all that. But it's not just their scalp that's dry. Their whole body is dry. Right, because they're not drinking enough water, not moisturizing. Well, yes, that as well. But these hormone levels are out oh, of whack. Yes. Especially so, for a woman, middle right, aged woman that right. might be going through menopause. Mm-hmm. The change. Well, not just that, but you know, women's bodies change. Everybody's body change right. all the time. But depending on what you're eating, if you're not eating right, and like you said, women with all these medications and things that you're on, your hormones and your body chemistry is always going back and forth. Or you could be a woman that's just not getting enough rest, that's not mm. knowing how to manage your time. Because I'm, I'm dealing with that with myself right now. Mm. Like, I got a lot going on. So just the other day, I went to the dentist to get some teeth pulled, and I passed out. You told me that. Yeah. They your said, ass passed <laughs> the fuck out. I'm talking about on the floor, laid out. I thought I was at home. <laughs> like, I came to, and the lady said, do you know where you are? I said, I'm at home. She said, no, ma'am. I said, oh, did I pass out? <laughs> like, seriously, but I found out, one, I was borderline for high blood pressure, but it wasn't because it does run in my family, so that should be checked if you have issues that are generational that you need to make sure you stay on top of your health to make sure that you're, you know, catching everything in the beginning. But mm-hmm. the doctor, my doctor told me that he was like, when do you stop? Like, mm-hmm. you need to take time to get some rest. Like, just not do nothing. I'm working, managing at Walgreens, getting off work, and then doing her, going doing her before I go in, doing her on the weekend. So I don't have any off days, not to mention my three kids that I have to deal with. So it could be, like, just overexerting and, doing, you know, doing stuff to yourself. Got to take time to rest. Everything happens for a reason. For every action, there's a reaction. So True. And rest is a really big big factor for how your body operates period so if you're not getting an adequate amount of rest then things are going to be off and you probably will be passing out and th- right <laughs> thinking you at home and thinking you at the house and you lay in the middle of the dentist's office everybody looking at you like did you hurt anything the back of my head <laughs> <laughs> speaking of passing out my dumb ass <laughs> <laughs> fell over that damn fence <laughs> oh my so God. my shoulder up oh my god anyway um, back on the topic, go to the doctor because it could be a number of things. I had one client one time I, um, was applying a relaxer to her hair and I got the first stroke on and she literally jumped almost out of the chair talking about it was burning. And I'm like, and you just put it on. Bitch, I just touched you. Like I <laughs> just touched you. Well, it probably was burning if her scalp was dry. Well, the thing was she had some kind of allergy yeast build up on her scalp or something or, or what fungus. it was it was a fungus yeah that was induced because of stress hmm. she was going through a lot with work with kids home all of that was you know everyday life doing a lot and that happened to um what do you call it induce is that the word i want to say yes yeah, uh, overly produced no nah, what they call it <laughs> no nah, that's not the word anyway it affects the stress is what caused a flare-up in whatever the yeast the bit, there's a name for this whatever it was but it Ugh. came to the conclusion of it was a yeast build up or whatever which is why her scalp was dry like it was but whatever that thing is called now i'm gonna have to text her and figure out what it's called and then we're gonna have to talk about it next week <laughs> that's some bullshit <laughs> but anyway it happened and she went to the damn doctor like i told her to and we figured out what the problem was we stopped relaxing for a while and she had some kind of cream that gave her that's what i've said that they like give her something to treat it's a them. very a severe form of psoriasis i believe it's okay okay severe and different, rare form it's different, different types kinds, of psoriasis yes. and that was one of them. i had a client would do the same thing like as soon as i would put the the relaxer, I don't care how much I based her. Mm-hmm. As soon as I put it on there, she was saying, Screaming and it's hollering. burning and it's burning. And she went to the doctor, come to find And out. I'm lying. It wasn't a relaxer. It was a color that I put on there, which the I thought was really weird for it to have been burning, which is why I was like, right. no, girl, you going to the doctor. Don't come back here until <laughs> you go to the doctor. And I meant what I said, you because I, I had never seen that before. Like, I literally on color, put one yeah. stroke of the color on the back of her head. It hadn't even turned yet. Right, you you just put and it on. She there. just, like, oh, it's burning, it's burning, it's burning. Like she was literally jumping out the chair, and I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, bitch, go to the doctor, <laughs> take your ass to the doctor. And she went, and that was what it was. Every time I tell somebody to go to the doctor, they come back and tell me, oh, you were right, it was something 
wrong on the inside. Well, we are standing over their heads and looking down and seeing stuff that they cannot see. Hmm. So we would know. But why don't folks want to go to the doctor, though? Um, probably scared of what they think is going to come. Or I know what it is. They're going to get revealed them the real them like if you're not taking care of yourself if you're not drinking water if like you're not doing what you're supposed to do people don't want to find out the truth the truth hurts i don't want to pay no goddamn copay that's why i don't go to the doctor <laughs> 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 i'm not gonna do all that and then they be looking at i didn't tell you to look for none of that stuff well you oh, have to go if you want to uh-huh. catch something early and ahead of time mike okay well then yes let me tell you i go to the doctor for every little bitty thing really if my pinky hurt i'm going to the doctor you don't never know it could be some form of pinky cancer i'm gonna be on top pinky of cancer would you say that you're a hypochondriac i, I can't be a little bit you think but so if something That's aching me stupid. <laughs> it's white. you might want to work on that let me tell you when you got all this stuff going on in my family the way it is right now, like mm-hmm. with sickness mm-hmm. and disease, I don't care what it is. I'm going to the doctor. Do you have a lot of hair loss? Me? In no. In your family? No. That we don't. Mm. Yeah, but y'all got some strong hair over there. I've done your hair. We do have a very strong hair. It gets a little thin, but not hair loss. Now, some of my younger cousins may have lost edges mm-hmm. but it wasn't because uh it's because they were doing stupid things like you know all these quick weeds and um what's that other stuff they be plastering on got to be glued these like, frontals these wigs yes. these sew-ins all of and this then kind they of stuff taking it out and permanent but remember when we did that panel a couple of years ago and the lady was talking about the sex hormones that could be off which yes, is why which we is lose right hair here. in the uh the temple region that they're not getting enough? i don't know if it's not necessarily that you're not getting enough sexual intercourse but your sex organs might be well you see not how functioning the way is. they should be <laughs> and that might be because you're not having sexual intercourse so i mean if you're 40 years old and you're a virgin and you don't have edges that's probably why <laughs> Do I know a 40 year old version? Like, <laughs> I'm fighting for my life. <laughs> That's probably oh not true at all, but it sounded like it was going to be funny as hell in my head. It was funny. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, it was real though. Like, the sex organs do have things to do with all your organs got things, they're connected. Your body is your neck bone connected to your neck bone. Right. You got to stimulate them if How does they're there. Go? The bones, the hands too. Them What's bones, them bones. <laughs> <laughs> Something about connected to the connected to the. Yeah, the hip bone connect. Yeah, to everything the... connects. Yeah. And you need to check all that shit out. Check it all out. Just check it all out. Do you send your clients to the doctor? Of course I do. Or y'all be running around there trying to formulate shit yourself. First of all, because before we got on the air, you said that you was a doctor. We both are doctors. I Michael. ain't got no damn degree. You know we went to that class. <laughs> You know what though? No, I started no, but using we that are stuff though. Certified hair loss, hair loss specialist. specialist. I will not call myself a doctor. Uh, but you, you just know, did though. Michael was a doctor before. <laughs> he, he, this is Doctor Swag, y'all. Y'all don't know that. <laughs> before there was even a Mister Too Much. There was Mister. There was Doctor Swag. Doctor Swag. And I used to prescribe. He did. What did I used to prescribe? Swag. Swag. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Stolen goods. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you were saying you sent him. Have you had any instances where you sent somebody to the doctor and come to find out it was? I did not have you? the. Uh... It's never been me. Let me just go on the record and say <laughs> it's never been my fault. <laughs> I did have a client that I asked to go to the doctor. She kept saying her hair was shedding and she don't know what happened. Mind you, she hadn't been to me in a while. This is one of my regular clients. And so I told her, you need to come more often than you have. One issue I thought that it was before I, she went to the doctor was, why don't people want to get their ends clipped? Mm. Like, you got to let go of that dead stuff if you want to continue on with growth. Some things have to die. I tell life people to all the time, on. it's like that thread on your garment. It's just going to keep running and running and running and running and right. running and running until you cut it. That's just what them splitting is going to do. And you know what? I told somebody the other day, um, this hair, it's going gonna, it, it's gonna to cut itself because she had had color that was grown off. Well, it had grown out, but it was broken off. She was saying, you know, it used to be so much more. And I said, well, yeah, it broke itself off. This, exactly. you know, it's it's going to cut itself one way or another. It's going to get cut. So, so why not just, just cut, cut it, it, keep up with it. Cut it. 
cut it. it. <laughs> Just cut it. So she but got her hair cut and then it was still shedding and then what? We cut her hair. We was I was doing all kind of protein treatments. It went from shedding to that it was coming out but at the bulb. Like I could see the follicle on the end of the hair. Would you say you all did too many protein treatments? I thought so. But when she went to the doctor, she had some rare form of cancer. Like, seriously, like it was like some kind of nasal cavity cancer. And she said Bitch, what? Yes. What are receipts? She did. We stopped everything for like the whole time she was going through treatment. Nasal cavity cancer. My Give me my fucking phone. <laughs> Quit playing. Quit playing. Keep talking. Talk to the folks because we're on time schedule. No, I'm going to look up nasal cavity did. cancer. She, it was like some rare form of cancer. Okay. And um, so we, you know, it because you are drunk everything. and <laughs> I am not drunk. You think that? Do you think I just made that up? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, we went to happy hour. I know what's going on. <laughs> anyway. We stopped everything. Girl! You thought I was lying, didn't you? We stopped all treatments that we were doing. And so all I did was we didn't do any chemical treatments. We just did shampoo, conditioning, like a good thick conditioner. And then every now and then we would do a vinegar like treatment on her scalp. And then for a while, she stopped coming because of the chemo and everything. She lost a little bit of her. It was shedding. She lost a little bit of it, but now it's all the way down her back. Like, because I told her, if you want me to grow your hair back, you have to stop and let me do everything that I need to do. So you all stopped with the chemicals? and, and uh, We stopped for the chem- She was. Is she still pressing or she's just wearing the natural style? We have actually went back to a relaxer. Oh. It's been a couple of years, but her hair is So she's cancer free now? Yes, she is. Oh, praise God. Amen. And then we even yeah. waited after the second go around to make Maybe. sure before I even started back putting the chemicals. But we did a very mild relax because you, your hair don't have to be bone straight. You just need to relax the follicles. That's it. I'm so tired of these motherfuckers trying to get this hair bone straight. With I know. Glasses. Remember them TCBs? I'm talking about you didn't even have to just get that. You know how to work so some relaxes in? You just put that on there and your hair just people swear they had Cherokee in them. <laughs> I never used a TCB. <laughs> I'm talking about that's that old, old school. It's beneath with me. The, <laughs> it's beneath me. Yes. Yes, I'm not using I don't even TCB. think they make that anymore, do they? They do. I see. Really? Yeah, I they still that. make all that shit. And uh, uh, Hawaiian Silky and all that bullshit. Yeah, they still make it. People still buy it. They still use it. And y'all need to stop that shit. Because that's probably why your hair Hawaiian falling out, too. Hawaiian Silky. Yeah, you're probably fucking up your hormones with these damn I beauty supply relaxers. I remember my was going to put a Hawaiian Silky on me and my sister. But she didn't call it a perm. She said, I'm going to give y'all a permanent. We were scared. Yeah. A permanent what? <laughs> but <laughs> that's what it was called. Like <laughs> A permanent? Yeah, that's what she said. I'm going to give y'all a permanent. But that's a wave, though. But it was a Hawaiian silk. We didn't know. We was but looking. a permanent is a wave. I don't know. It's a, that's like the perm, the curl rods. We know it didn't sound like a relaxer. Something that you needed. <laughs> right. She said permanent. So I said, what is it going to do permanently? Like, we was nervous. Um, yeah, we got a permanent that year. How it, old was y'all? We was in Pittsburgh, Texas in the summertime. How old was y'all, though? I think we was probably like five and six. That was before y'all started y'all's feminine little situations. You know that's not supposed to happen, right? I know. Well. That's probably another reason why y'all hormones is fucked up. Because your <laughs> mamas was putting relaxes on your head at three years old. But, you know, hey. I it's never fine. thought about that. That's true, though. But let me tell you, some of these babies need relaxes. No, like they don't. No, they don't. Did the hair follicles still forming and all of that? I'm not saying like at three. It might be some can't you don't you going on, but <laughs> <laughs> you need to learn how to work with it. And nobody told you to have kids anyway. So there's that. True. Or like my grandmother would say, be careful who you have kids with. <laughs> yes. Be very careful. You need to know what his hair, her hair look like, their parents, her and their grandparents and some of the aunties and uncles too. Cause them no, kids reach up and out. Ancestors. Yeah. Go back. They go all the way. They, back. Those kids reach back. And Not just with their hair, but them. They're How crazy. They, they come out crazy too. Mental issues. Mm-hmm. One more levels. Out of whack. You got to know they folk. Like my dad used to say, who they folk? Okay. You got to know they folk. Mm. <laughs> 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 okay, so. Maybe we should do some hair equations. Okay. Because I'm tired of talking about people going to the doctor. Because they're not going to go anyway. They're gonna have to. It's gonna have to be something wrong before they go. 
like deathly wrong. Like you get one stroke of color and then you <laughs> stop. <laughs> Michael, that's not funny. It's not she funny. She had an issue. She yeah, she had an issue. But it's okay. Okay. Here's a her equation. You know what her equations are, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Everybody that come on here, see what I was talking about earlier. The amount of people who come on here to show don't know what the fuck be going on. If you're not <laughs> even watching this shit, but you want to be on a goddamn show. Okay. Anyway, uh, blonding process all the way to platinum plus a disappearing act equals. Your hair popping. Bitch. <laughs> a fabulous pixie cut. More than a pixie cut, may have to bow fade this shit. Yeah, bow fade. <laughs> no, nah, for real. I had a you couple had that, that had happen. to bow fade. Yeah, I did. I remember. Tell the story. Which one? Either one. <laughs> so I had this one, would let her hair grow, and I always wanted color. Mind you, her hair was not strong enough, and then she was relaxing, like one the kind that want to relax their hair, and then come to the beauty salon, like the price is going to change type of person. But yeah, she did that a couple of times and then kept asking for color and color. And I told her, no, you don't need color right now. Your hair is not healthy enough. Let's get it back in a healthy state and then we'll go for there. And then let me say this on the side. If you cannot commit to me, I don't play around with color. If you cannot commit to what it's going to take to keep it up, the conditioning treatments that you're going to need and come into the beauty salon on a regular basis, I'm not going to do your color. Mm. You can go somewhere else. And then she went somewhere else. And got her hair colored, and then not even what a week later, she was completely bald on the top of her head, and then want to come back and want me to regrow her hair out again. So yeah, we had to cut it with a clipper, like all the way to the scalp. And then what? We regrew it over again. Got it what really. What was healthy. the process? Was it a teeth was- pulling thing? Cause I have one right now. I'm trying to get the hair to grow back, and it's just like if you, you stop doing what you're doing. Well, you first of all, you cannot get the hair to grow back if you're continuously putting weave and tension on the hair. Mm-hmm. It's not going to help it out. Completely stop everything that you're doing and listen to your stylist. That's why it's important for us to be licensed. Exactly. And so, if you can, and you're watching this or listening, please go. Find out what the damn petition is. I figure out some kind of way to put a link everywhere you'll be listening to the petition to sign it because they are trying to pass a law where cosmetologists don't have to be licensed anymore to do hair. I think it's you know all of it, not just hair, right? Yeah, barbers too. That they that's been out there for a while. Actually, some states are already deregulated, but. Let that happen in Texas or anywhere else, period. Then you have a lot of people playing stylists. You have a lot of fungus and illness and other stuff that is going along coming out that you don't even know where it came from because a lot of people is not in it for they it's not an actual passion for them. They in it for like a style or they think, oh, stylists and barbers, you know, just kind of glorify the business and it's about money, but it's not about that. You don't see the struggle, what it takes. For a person or, you know, a person to get out there to try to sell themselves, especially in this industry. Like, you got to be able to promote yourself, get out there and sell yourself. Not just that, but it's going to be a a lot of them, like, trying to build up a clientele. But you need to be educated. Exactly. All of what you're saying is true, but these motherfuckers need to be educated. And we have to go through a certain amount of hours of continued education and renew these licenses and all of this kind of stuff. So that we stay up on what the fuck is going on because it's always some new shit like nasal cavity cancer coming the fuck out. And we need to stay up on this kind of stuff and, and, and know what it does to your hair and your insides and all that kind of stuff. And these people are not interested in learning um those things and They're so not. they needed to be weeded out and you need to be able to continue to go to school and clock those 1500 hours i heard that it was a thousand for them damn motherfuckers in high school it really irrit- yes i had a um a teacher who works in the public school uh she works in high school but she does the cosmetology program mm-hmm. at the high school and they only had to do a thousand hours oh wow <sighs> broken up over three years oh wow mm. Mm-hmm. And they're, so by the time they graduate, they're licensed. They're, they, they're ready to take the test. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And they only have to pay $1,000 to go to school. But that's neither here nor there. The fact <laughs> of the matter is that they have gone through the process of learning something. And so they have to be held to the standard of doing continuing education and continue to educate themselves on the new whatever's going on. Now, the sad part is that you don't necessarily have to actually go to a real class to do continuing education. You can sit right. there online and click that button. 
I would hope that you stay abreast and up to date on the new techniques and the new trends and the new things. Get yeah, abreast, bitch. <laughs> stay the fuck up on it and learn what's going on in the world. Shit. <laughs> So that we can continue to make some real money and continue to change lives and do what the fuck we be doing in this industry. It's not just playing in hair and playing right, in makeup right. and making people cute or turning them into somebody that they not like y'all like to try to say we do all the time. Hmm. So anyways, take your asses to the doctor and then sign the damn petition. Drink water. Drink water while you sign in the petition saying that we need to continue to have a state board regulating licenses and things like that for people in the beauty industry. Right. Now, anyway, back to this hair motherfucking equation. I <laughs> want you to tell the people about the motherfucker who went and got the quick weave and all the hair came out. It was stuck to her head and we took 18 years to get it oh out. And God. how did y'all grow her hair back? It took, first of all, let me say this. If you are sitting in somebody's chair to get a quick weave, and you feel like, or whatever kind of service that you're getting, you feel like something is not right. You have the right to say, hold on, wait a minute, stop for a second. Hold on, let me see what you're doing or, you know, what's going on? I had a client. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Because they might try to take that shit a little too far now. Now, some people will. But if you feel glue is being poured on your hair and there's no barrier and then tracks laid down on top of it, yeah. You have the right to say, excuse me, hold on, what's going on? It's not normal for a person to open a bottle of glue, pour it on your hair. That ain't normal. Who does that? I seen it on YouTube. Was it a barrier in between? You can't be looking at YouTube. I'm just saying. I'm just telling you what the client is going to say. I saw it on YouTube. At the time, it was not on YouTube. (laughs) That is not normal. I have well, seen let me it say, for real though. I have normal. seen it, that's but I'm telling you what me. they're gonna say. I've saw it online. The girl poured the glue on, and then boom, bam, bang. So this happened to at, at the time. This person wasn't even a client of mine. This happened to somebody that I know, and she came to me to ask me how to remove the the quick weave. Her head was hurting. It hadn't even been like a full week or so that she had it on there. And so she wanted to go back to the person who did it. They were giving her the run around. They didn't want to uh, wash her hair. She couldn't get it out. So I told her, yes, I can wash her hair. It took forever, ever. We tried everything. I had to Google other ways to remove a quick weave. What the hell did y'all do? Oh, you ended up cutting it out, huh? No, let me tell you what pulled it off. I Googled and it said rubbing alcohol. Remember, we had put the glue remover. We was doing the shampoo, the glue remover shampoo. None of this stuff was working. We Googled and it said to get some rubbing alcohol. I went next door to, I think it was a dollar store, bought a bottle of rubbing alcohol. We poured that on. The hair came off, but there was a thick layer of glue still on top of her hair. When we finally got that glue off, mind you, it came off in a toupee. The glue came off right. like a toupee. Right. That means they poured a bottle of glue on there. I'm just, I'm still appalled by that. But anyway, when the glue came up, all of her hair came off with it. And the top of her head around. So she just had like this around. I'm going to say it took about, before I can actually start seeing growth, it took about eight months. And um, she was devastated. Like, she didn't know what she was going to do. Her hair was you already short. You should have been short. devastated. Yeah. And then she couldn't I'm get I'm devastated any. that you sat there and let somebody <laughs> put a glue in your head. Right. That's not normal on either I'm end. devastated. I'm beyond devastated. Anyways, what happened? So, anyway, it took about eight months before we started seeing... Anything? No, I, I could see it right away. But what I did was... We, uh, I washed and make sure I stimulate, condition every week. We use some um, tea tree oil. I told her, if you come to me once a week, I can grow your hair back. That means you not do anything to it. In the process of me growing her hair back, I just made her a couple different caps that she switched out and we did for the week. Hair finally grew back, nice and thick in the top, and she wore it cut short for a while. She stayed with me for a little bit, disappeared. Came back again when she started having experiencing hair loss again. It wasn't as bad as the first time the top started getting thin. I got it back to growing and thick, and then she left again. So I don't know what the current condition is of her hair. But first of all, I, I say this all the time. If you chair hop, your hair is going to pop. pop. Because you don't know what this person, not saying that the next person is doing something bad to your hair, 
their techniques may be different from mine. You don't know what's going on and what they're using versus what I'm using and if they kind of react with each other. So that goes back to the topic that we talked about several weeks ago, the importance of knowing your client. And that's goes both ways. Um, knowing your stylist. I don't know what we were talking about. I don't know. But you need to know your stylist. Your stylist needs to know you. You all right. need to have constant communication about what's going on in your body and in your hair so that in the event that you have to go somewhere else to another stylist, you have the knowledge to tell them X, Y, and Z has been done. And this is the way we have to take care of what is already going on in my head. And right. it's up to them as the professional. Hopefully you went somewhere that's of the caliber or better than where you previously were so that they know how to really take care of your hair. But anyway, you tell them that information so that they know how, what steps to take and move forward with whatever y'all going to do with your head. Right. Communication on both ends. And I believe as well, the stylist, if it's something that you're not comfortable with doing or that's not your line, refer them to somebody else. Don't jump in there and try to do it. I can tell you all the time. It's just some stuff that I'm just not going to even try to do. If I hear certain stuff, it just drains the life out of me. I know enough stylists. I'm like, well, hold on this. You know, Michael is good with this. Let me give you his number. Let me call Michael first to see if he's even accepting new clients. Or however, like, refer them out to people. Don't try to jump in there and do something that you know you're not comfortable with just to get the dollar. Mm. And vice versa. Mm. Like, people don't be just going to a stylist just for a hairstyle. And don't be trying to force your hairstylist to do stuff they done told you they, that, that they don't do. Because I've had some try to do that to me, too. Oh, I don't want to go nowhere else. You got to do it. You got to do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I'm not. I don't want to. Right. And I don't have to. And I'm not. And I'm not going to do it. Because I don't have time. <laughs> anyway. Um... Is there anything that you would like to get out of your chest that has that have nothing to do with this hair or anything? You want to say something to your kids, to your dog, to your next door neighbor? I don't have a dog. To your cousin. Let me say to something about my next door neighbor. It's not, <laughs> let me say something. Yes! I've been waiting on somebody to come here and get real. Yes! First of all, she not even my next door neighbor. She like three neighbors over. Oh, that something. bitch. Yeah. Mm. So anyway, I guess she be trying to see what's going on in the neighborhood or whatever. No, I'm not selling dope. I'm doing her styles. Oh. Yeah, she came knocking on my door on Saturday. Like, uh, one of my clients opened up the door and was like, who's the homeowner or the renter here? And so I'm looking because, you know, I got somebody bent over in the sink, you know, watching her. I am licensed. It don't matter where you're doing hair at. I'm I mean, licensed. it does. But <laughs> anyways. So anyway, she first of all, she goes, well, do you think you could do something to my hair? No. And then she said, no, just playing. Um, our trash didn't get picked up today. Me or I'm not going to say the lady's name. My uh, my directly next door yeah, neighbor. We don't say names here. Yeah. She goes, my trash didn't get picked up today because whatever you got going on in here. Oh, no. Blocked. Yeah, she did. That's what she said. So I, I immediately put the sprayer down. I said, well, first of all, ma'am, I didn't start doing her to after 12 o'clock, noon, afternoon. Trash had been picked up, I know, at about 930 about when I made it back to the house because my trash was picked up. No, ma'am, your trash didn't get picked up because you had about six or seven cars uh -oh. lined up on this side. Uh -oh. Yeah, blocking your trash. Uh-oh. And we in a cul-de-sac. The little thing can't get around her like that. You got to put your trash out there. She ain't have it she out She didn't have it where it was supposed to be. But my thing was, okay, so you came over here to say what to me? Like, I need to come into your trash. Like, what did you come over here for? She want to like, know what the fuck is going on over there. Why she was looking all up in hell. I said, don't you ever knock on my goddamn door again. Did you tell her that? Yeah, I told her that. Bitch, don't come knock on her motherfucking door. And you know what she said? Have a nice day. Yeah, bye. Follow that same trail you came okay. up in here with. You know what? That reminds me of an instance I had with my neighbor in my trash. Okay, so you know, <laughs> I was in the house and we put the trash at the corner. We don't have like buckets of trash. We just put the trash bags out. Oh, okay. Like Where we don't have stay? garbage cans and stuff. In not on the <laughs> I'm not telling them people that. Um, so anyway. got a can, right? Or is that only in the hood? Honey, we don't have cans. Okay. We just put the trash out. We're clean people. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, so like. This is my house, and this is hers, but she got a little fence, right? Okay. And so I put my trash right here by the fence, because that's at the corner. Everything else is driveway. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's just little piece of grass over here. <laughs> Did you put your trash at the corner? If that's where you want, just where you put it at. If that's where you Was want that your to trash, your corner? It was my motherfucking corner. Okay. I'll anyway. Uh, uh, shit it, bitch. It's trash. <laughs> and she got a fence. It's not touching none of her shit. 
<laughs> so anyway, I came People out to put some trash. People get upset about their trash. Girl, she gonna tell me talking about don't put this. Hey, baby, don't put your trash on my fence no more. I said, well, where is it supposed to go? She talking about right there where you got a bitch. It's this far away from the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Come out right there where you got it. But the last time you had uh you had it on my fence, just don't put your trash on my fence. But did that stop them from picking up the trash? Hell no. Oh, okay. I just walked away. She just didn't want you to touch her stuff. I put that fence, I'll be putting that trash as close to that fence as I can without, without, it without it putting it on her so she <laughs> could be so walking pissed. over there and seeing. Yeah. Just so she could walk over there and see if it's touching or not. She probably measured it with her. She can <laughs> measure it and she can, you listen, you'd be better off watching the weather before you think you're going to try to tell me hmm. what the fuck to do about some goddamn trash, bitch. You keep saying something to me like I got that goddamn trash, you're going to wake up and it's going to be over that fucking fence. How about scattered it again? Yeah, <laughs> bitch, don't play with me because I will go to Sam's and get all kind of Charmin. <laughs> you can't waste the Charmin like bitch, that. Bitch, Charmin or I will get bread and I will lace your fucking lawn with it. Don't play with me. And then birds, gonna them be birds gonna be all. I will lay piece by piece over every inch of your yard that I can. And Sidewalk, over- <laughs> porch, mailbox. Not over the trash. Yeah, shit. But that's what happened. Nice. Anyway, that ain't got nothing to do with hair. That At was get it off your chest. This is it. That's all. I'm glad you was able to come to the Michael Rose experience today. I hope that you people out there go and check your goddamn hormones because it's very important. And I just really want you all to take care of yourselves because, I mean, if you don't, then your hair's going to look like shit. And then you're going to be mad. So. And you don't have to get a ball fade. Oh. <laughs> Y'all come back next week. I need to go get my own hormones. Shit. <laughs>